Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about Stephen King's 1991 novel Needful Things. I'll be demonstrating what to look for when trying to identify a first US and first UK edition of the book. In addition, I'll show and talk about the special edition from PS Publishing. The first US edition was published by Viking in a massive 1.5 million copy first print run. It's the back jacket. One thing to look out for right off the bat is reflective foil printing on the front cover. I've seen lots of later printings and book club editions that have this type of non-reflective printing on the spine on the cover as well. But a first edition will have this shiny reflective lettering. Inside the jacket, look for a price of $24.95. And on the copyright page, a number line including the number one and the language first published in 1991 by Viking Penguin. Pretty easy to spot and know what you got. Underneath the jacket, dark gray boards, this image and SK's initials imprinted in gold foil, and the spine, black cloth with gold printing. First US edition, pretty good looking book. The first UK edition was published by Hodder and Stoughton. There's the back jacket image, author picture. Look for a price of £15.99. And on the copyright page, look for the language first published in Great Britain, 1991. Underneath the jacket, pretty typical UK Stephen King, single color, boards all around. It's just black with gold printing in foil on the spine. I believe the UK edition precedes the US edition, making it the true first worldwide edition. But if you're collecting both US and UK editions, you're going to want to have them both. But there you go. UK first edition of Needful Things. In a side-by-side -side artwork comparison between the UK and the US, I have to give the US the definite edge. Um, the 80s, with a few exceptions, um, showed UK editions with much more elaborate jacket artwork images. And then the 90s, things um, sort of change, simplify a bit, but with Needful Things, this book has a wraparound dust jacket image, which I think is really cool. The UK, the back cover is Stephen King's face, which is also fine but from an artwork perspective, this is really neat. So across the street from Needful Things, you see buildings, and then in an ominous bit of foreshadowing, in the window, those same buildings are on fire, and there's a shadowy figure from the light inside, you can see on the sidewalk. It's a really, really cool image. This is probably one of my favorite Stephen King dust jacket images of all time. In 2022, PS Publishing came out with the latest in their ongoing series of illustrated Stephen King special editions. And in this case, they tackled needful things. It comes with an illustrated slipcase illustrated book with a wraparound dust jacket. In this case, it mimics the artwork on the slipcase. 
And then underneath printed boards that also mimic the artwork on the slipcase. So you have a dust jacket, boards, and slipcase that all have the same artwork. So, you know, maybe doesn't rank super high on the creativity meter, but it looks fine. Um, initially, when I got this book, I was disappointed because the slipcase artwork does not match the mock-up that PS had been advertising and showing on their website and on social media for some time. Um, it just, it wasn't what I was expecting and it was kind of a drag when I first got it. But sometimes with PS Publishing, uh, it just takes a minute uh, to grow on me and now I think it's fine. It would have been nice to have a different, um, different artwork used for the slipcase, but the slipcase is not the main attraction. Here's the book. Comes with a page marker ribbon, which is always a nice touch. Illustrated end papers. Limited to a thousand copies, signed by artist John Coulthart. This is copy 384. There will also be a lettered edition of Needful Things if tradition holds um, with PS Publishing, and that would be 26 copies that will be signed by the artist as well as Stephen King. So unlike this book, which was relatively accessible price-wise, the lettered is incredibly expensive and only sold, I believe, to subscribers. But anyway, as is the case with all PS Publishing books, Needful Things is, if I can find an example, profusely illustrated throughout. The artwork is rendered in black and white, which is fine. They mix it up. Sometimes the artwork is rendered in color. Sometimes it's in black and white. I like how the PS series is definitely, um, they're related to each other and they have similar dimensions, but each one has its own unique flair and feel and feeling to them, which I appreciate. Each piece of artwork has a little bit of white space, like a border around it, which I think is also kind of a nice touch. And the artwork is printed into the page block. So no tipped in pages, there's page 25. And on the back, page 26, is printed artwork. Overall, it's a um, pretty good looking book. It's not my favorite that I've seen from them. And I was wondering, initially, because they have a history of doing Stephen King novels in three volumes, including, understandably, The Stand, which is a really, really long book, but also um, Tommyknockers and even Salem's Lot they did in three volumes. Needful Things is a big book, and I was wondering if it would also get the three-volume treatment, but it comes out in a single volume, and it looks pretty good. I imagine PS was interested in keeping their cost down, the cost to produce as well as the cost for people to buy the book by printing a single volume. But there you have it. Needful Things from P.S. Publishing. At some point in the 80s, Stephen King infamously um, is quoted as saying something to the effect of his books are like greasy fast food cheeseburgers. They taste good and they fill you up, but they're not necessarily very good for you. 
and I think he he's quoted as saying that uh, sometime around the publication of Christine, but <clears throat> every so often when I'm reading or thinking about a Stephen King novel, that quote comes to mind, and I think that it applies to needful things. It was a huge seller, sold over a million and a half copies, but was not a number one bestseller in either hardcover or paperback. Um, I do remember when this one came out, and so my grandma was the Stephen King reader in the family, and I remember her um, having the book, reading it, saying that it was okay, but she chose not to keep it. She chose to trade it in to the local bookstore, um, may it rest in peace, in my hometown, and pick up something else. Every once in a while, she liked a book enough, she would keep it in the collection, and um, this one she decided to pass along. And it wasn't until the last couple of years that I took the plunge and read it myself. I did try to, I started reading it, I tried to read it when I was a kid, and it was just, well, over my head. And um, so I've, I know some people that absolutely love this book, and I know some people that can't stand it, that despise it. And I, I experienced it in the audiobook rendition, which is actually read and performed by Stephen King. And I found that to be an incredibly enjoyable way to experience needful things. So if you're sort of on the fence about it, if you haven't actually read it, um, I might recommend that you check out the audiobook as read by Stephen King. I Nobody knows the text better than him. And I found the book to be surprisingly funny, which is, I think, what he was going for. Um, everyday average people doing nasty things for really selfish reasons and in particular there's a, a pastor preacher religious figure that i think is molded in um sort of in in the mold of jim baker and stephen king just i think he was probably excited to read the book in the audiobook version just so he could perform that char that character. Literally made me laugh out loud. Um, he really goes all in with the performance and I found it highly enjoyable and I recommend it if you're interested. Um, this Needful Things, um, I believe, is the first novel that Stephen King began and finished entirely after he got sober. And as such, it's kind of an interesting, um, again, as he does periodically, sort of a career summation, throwing his entire bag of tricks at a novel. And then, as he has with other locales and other um, towns and buildings and places um, just sort of purges everything in fire before before the story's over and then moves on um, to whatever comes next in his career. And in this case, um, what came next were a couple of what I consider to be um, some of his greatest work in Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne. Um, but Needful Things is stuffed full. It's fun. It's funny. Um, it's a bit repetitive, but, um, you know, if you, if you hang in there with it, if you can see the satirical elements of American society that I think Stephen King was going for, um, the whole thing becomes more enjoyable. It's not all flawless it's not all perfect there are some problematic stereotypes and some characters that do some very very disturbing things and have some really really dark skeletons in their closet but you know what stephen king novel doesn't have a bunch of skeletons in the characters closets so i i give needful things a pass it is um you know, a big, greasy cheeseburger of a novel, 
but I think it's an important one in the Stephen King bibliography and, you know, in, in the right frame of mind, if you're not feeling up to getting dressed up and going out to a fancy restaurant, it can be very, very tasty indeed. So I highly recommend it. Um, the U.S. edition, you can find this all over the place. This is not a valuable book. A million and a half copy first print run, but it is over 30 years old. And even though there were that many copies, it's popular, people read it, and didn't necessarily take care of it, can be hard to find in nice shape. Particularly the foil on the front, the name, the title, um, I often find with um, Pitt's little scuffs, imperfections. So if you can find one with good foil on the front cover, that's definitely a mark for the copy. And, um, you know, don't... If you can find a really nice first edition copy for under $20, I think... I think you're doing you're doing okay if you can find one for under 10 you're doing great and don't don't jump at the first copy you see especially if it has issues hang on be patient because they are out there and they definitely turn up um, from time to time the UK edition I wasn't as familiar with this is a fairly recent addition to my collection and it's nice to have it to complement the U.S. edition, but like I said, the dust jacket artwork is a little plainer, um, which seems to be around the turn of the 90s um, with the uncut edition of the stand. The U.K. artwork gets more simple, more streamlined, and um, I'm nearing the end of my my collection of U.K. first editions because the artwork just doesn't speak to me and I don't yet feel the completionist urge to just keep collecting them just to have them. Um, I really, I would love for the artwork to speak to me, to be unique, to be different, and I just don't necessarily feel that way about a lot of the 90s and beyond in the UK. But anyway, I have needful things and eventually I, I'm sure I will collect more to add to the collection. Um, the PS Publishing Edition is interesting and it's it's a nice it's a nice book. Um, I do wish and I don't know why the decisions are made or how they're made um, but I do wish that they had gone with the original slipcase artwork design that they had originally advertised rather than having a slipcase dust jacket and boards all have the exact same artwork which seems a little repetitive but uh, regardless um, PS editions they have their fans they have their detractors but they are good investments and this book has you know already doubled in price since it was released in October which is a pretty good investment Indeed, I don't know if I'll keep it forever, but the longer I have it, the more it grows on me. And I find that that's often the case. Every once in a while, a PS edition will come out and just wow me right out of the gates. The Dead Zone is a great example. It's beautiful. I love that book. And for some reason, it, it's, it hasn't appreciated in value quite as much as ones that didn't necessarily wow me, like Cujo, Needful Things, um, but it, it's a, you know, taste is a personal thing, and there's there's no accounting for it, so anyway, um, the PS edition is well worth checking out if you're a fan of the story. Um, if history holds, it will probably continue to grow in value, and so the sooner you grab a copy, the better if you are interested. But anyway, um, thank you for your time. I, I appreciate it, and I hope you have a great rest of your day wherever you are. Thanks a lot. Bye.